Hey everybody, I'm Holly, aka the Scientology Geek, and welcome to episode 38 of Going Over the Data Series. Uh, today we're just going to finish up the policy that we were working on last time, and there's only about two pages left, so this should be a pretty short video. Um, if you don't know, I've taken up Mark Headley's birthday game challenge, which means I just want to get my stats up as high as possible by March 13th, which is the day of L. Ron Hubbard's birthday and the big birthday game event that Scientology hosts every year. So, like, comment, hit the notification bell, subscribe, share it with your friends, your family, just do what you got to do to get that awareness out there and let's boost those numbers in YouTube's algorithm. Uh, if you want access to any of the volumes or data series or policies, whatever, tech, um, flag orders, base orders, any of the bleh, any of the miscellaneous material I have on the Google Drive folder, feel free to hit me up at scientologic at gmail.com. That's in the description, as well as the link to my Discord server where you can go there and hit me up with a valid Gmail address because I will be sending you through invites, email invites, not through um, shareable links. So without further ado, let's get started. So we left off at native think. It may come as a surprise or no surprise at all that the ability to evaluate as given in this data series is not necessarily native to a being. In a native state, a being detests illogic and rejects it. He seldom uses it for any other purposes than humor or showing up a rival in debate as a fool or using injustice or a court of law to prove the other side wrong or guilty. Okay, is he trashing the justice system? I mean, not that he hasn't already done it before, but I don't know if he's saying that illogic is sometimes used in the justice system or if he's completely blanket state stating that the justice system and courts of law are illogical. I need a little more clarity on this statement to figure out how he wants to phrase it. A being is dedicated to being logical, and he does usually a wonderful job of it. But when he encounters illogic, he often feels angry or frustrated or helpless. He has not, so far as I know, ever used illogic as a systematic tool for thinking. Maybe it's because you're the only one who does, and because you're system is faulty. Certain obsolete efforts to describe man's thinking processes stressed associative thought and various other mechanisms to prove man a fully logical animal. The moment they tried to deal with the logic, they assigned it to aberration and sought drugs, tortures, or executions that would cure it. None of them ever thought of using illogic as a tool of rational thinking. Thus, they did not advance anyone's intelligence and conceived intelligence as unchangeable and fixed. The only Greek school of philosophy that dealt with illogic was the sophist school, but even then they had no real idea of the illogic. They were employed by politicians to make their political acts seem reasonable. Okay, I feel like, I, just straight up, I feel like this statement is wrong. I don't feel like they were, they may have been employed by politicians, but I don't think it was just to justify political acts. I, I'd have to look up this information in order to get a better idea of what the sophist school did. Even humorists have no real idea of the logic. Reading their ideas of a theory of humor shows them to be off the mark. They don't really know what's funny. There's tons of different types of humor covered. Just because you dictated what art is does not mean you get to dictate what humor is. Laughter is rejection, actually. Okay. In what context? Explain. In humor, you will find usually deals with one or another outpoint put in such a way that the reader or audience can reject it. Not always. Stand-up comedians sometimes talk about life situations. This is not out points. It's just funny things that happened. The groan of most humorists is that too often their hearers go unreasonable on them. Pat, who was that hobo I saw you with last night? Mike, that wasn't no hobo, that was my fife. The listener, but maybe it was a very slender hobo. That's just a play on words, and, and just pretending someone had a hearing problem. What's the problem with this? The tendency of a being is to try to keep it reasonable, logical, rational. And that is, of course, a very praiseworthy impulse, or all life's endeavors might unhinge. The fear of being illogical is a secret fear of being crazy or insane, not an idle fear when psychiatry was roaming around loose, or at the least being thought a fool or dullard, or at the very, very least, unworldly and uneducated. To evaluate and be a fine evaluator is to be able to prevent a slump toward a painful collapse, and to be able to steer the way from the non-ideal present to the ideal future. A person who feels queasy about his sanity really doesn't dare look at outpoints or confront or use a logic. 
yet it's the way to full sanity itself. A person who feels queasy about his sanity really doesn't dare look at outpoints or confront and use a logic, yet it is the way to full sanity itself. No, it's not. The ability to evaluate puts one at cause over both the mad and ideal. It places a being at a height it is unlikely he has ever before enjoyed in the realm of commanding the situations of life. I mean, it, this brings up elitism and saying that Scientologists are supposedly more intelligent and better than any other people. It's very worthwhile to accept such an ability. It's very worthwhile to acquire such an ability as it's doubtful if it ever before has been achieved. It's being achieved on its own without you, and it's been achieved without you. Stop discounting everything. So, we have learned that, according to Hubbard, a being in a native state detests illogic and rejects it. Um, in order to have illogic, you need to have logic. So, and that's a human concept. So, I don't know if he's talking about Thetans or... If he's talking about humans specifically, I still have the problem with him calling this illogic. Um, I have the problem with him using outpoints as illogic. When I think of logic, I think of logical fallacies. Straw man. Uh, what do you call it? Friggin' no true Scotsman. Ad hominem. I know there's other types of logic, but in this case, when it comes to data and reason, this is the type of thing I tend to think of. Not something that's wrong. Which is what an outpoint is. It's just something that's wrong. Wrong does not mean illogical. Anyway, we have a possible jab at the court system. Again, I need clarification on that. Um, we have a claim that no one used illogic as a tool of rational thinking. No shit. Uh, because it's not. They use logical fallacies. We've had historical claims about the sophists and how politicians in those times used them to basically further their agenda talks about laughter is rejection and he provides a pretty shitty example to go along with it one that just seems to be a, a, a play on words mixed with an ear hearing problem and we've had elitism saying that the ability to evaluate places a being at a height that it's unlikely that they have ever reached before so talk about pumping someone up just for knowing the data series anyway that's all i got today i'll talk to all of you guys later see ya